Hi, how are you? Finished my, my long walk this morning. My five, well, it's not, it wasn't a long walk, we just did a small 5k walk with Ma Molly the amazing sun gazing dog. And now we're having our coffee philosophy here at uh, Latitude in Coomera. And I'm joined here this morning by my beautiful partner, the wonderful Ken Wills. He's a former super athlete. He's done everything from being um, New South Wales junior gymnastic champion through to working as an A grade footballer for Rabbitohs. Um, he's also been TRG police, you know, rescuing people for a living. Uh, had to be super fit to do that. Water police, ski instructor. <laughs> what else have you done? You've done so many things. Anyway, he's been a super athlete, a multi modality super athlete. And we were just talking about the pain and gain principle and how the discomfort of exercise stops so many people when they start their routines. We were talking before this morning about doing five Tibetans, doing the Saran Namaskara, doing our spiritual exercises, but also walking is a spiritual exercise. And I had so many people send me messages go, oh, I walked you said, but it's, I'm a little stiff and sore today. I don't think I'll do that again for, for a week or so. Uh, I, I did it yesterday, but it's too cold this morning to get out of bed. Or, or some people just go, stuff that, I'm not doing that. And it just astounds me because um, I, ha I counsel pregnant women all the time to walk a kilometre a day while they're pregnant. Because if you do, you're going to have a greatly reduced labour. And labour pain is greatly lessened as well. Like uh, my labours, I had a North American Indian lady tell me that before I had my first son. And I was living in Byron Bay, so I'd walk up the beach from Suffolk Park into Byron Bay once a week and still walk a kilometre a day as well. My labour was two hours, 20 minutes. My second labour, when I knew what to expect, was I was able to enjoy the process. Again, it was nice and short. It was intense, but it wasn't what I call painful. I had been walking a kilometre a day. Um, and I allowed myself to have joy. Um, so, you know, we were laughing and joking while I was in labour. Um, and my baby was born laughing. And I had an orgasm during labour. So this is the payoff to a little discomfort now. Yeah, sure you've got to put in a bit of effort now, but you get the rewards. And when you get to our age, and I'm in my um, late 50s, and Mr. Wills is in his early 60s, mm -hmm. we realise that you've got to put in some effort now, because this is the age where you have to make that choice. Either you regenerate, or you get ready to die. So, the, the, the discomfort that you're going to experience now, sure, if you go for your first one kilometre walk, I'm not going to lie to you, there's going to be a few muscles that are going to go, oh, I haven't done that for a while. And if you let that slight discomfort stop you, then what happens the next day is that psychologically, you're actually preventing yourself from doing it the day after that. It's actually a good discomfort. How would you describe the discomfort that you feel when you're training? I mean, you've trained in so many different things. And you train for the result at the end. I know you've trained to compete. Most people that are out there listening to this live are not going to compete. But they're going no. to get the benefit. So how would you describe that discomfort? Well, the discomfort, if you don't use it, you lose it. It's that simple. So you, you've got to keep doing a certain amount of exercise, even if it's just a basic exercise like walking, just to keep your joints. It's like an engine. You've got to keep it oiled. You've got to keep it moving. And otherwise lot, it seizes up. Otherwise it seizes <laughs> up. And I can show you just a quick tip. All through your life, if you've trained, yeah, it's hard, and it's hard getting up after a game of football and you're bruised and battered, but you get up and you train again. You have to, because you're getting paid to do it. But you gotta work through that pain, and it's the same if you're just a normal athlete. If you're just training, you've gotta to get to the gym again and work through that pain barrier, and then it becomes easier and easier and easier, and it becomes addictive, and you want to do it, you want to do it. You feel depressed if you don't do it. But the warning that I'm giving you today is that once you hit 60, your health goes down at a greater rate of knots than you, and, and it will surprise you. It surprised me. 
that once you hit 60, if you don't do your training, your health goes down really, really fast. And then it, it will set in some sort of depression where you don't want to train. So that's when you go downhill. So when you're at that point, you either go down, as Shay said, very, very quickly into your 70s, or you can stay on a moderate level if you train and go down a lot slower into your 70s. But if you don't train, I can assure you, once you hit that 60 and you have played football, you are an athlete and you'll know about pain. You'll know about the injuries you've had because they come back to bite you. So you need to, to work on those and not sit back and, and, and feel the pain. You've got to work around your injuries and keep yourself relatively fit. Once you hit that 60, it's down. It, you go down really quickly. Yeah, even if like the majority of people that tune into our lives are not professional athletes. No, I mean, and that's even more true for people that haven't been exercising on a regular basis through their life. You know, at being in your mid midlife, it's not too late to start. Being in your after 60s, I mean, no. even your 70s, it's not too late to start. You can get the motion back in those joints. You can get the strength back in those muscles. Most you, certainly. You can reverse your aging. Ten years is easy to do. No, you know, no. with with training. I mean, uh, there are five nations around the globe. The average life expectancy is 120. They have a good omnivore diet. They have a high mineral water content, but they also have physical activity every day on average with most of the people. So, you know, it, it, it's part of their daily life. They have to walk up hills, they have to go out and, of course. and do their physical labor. But now they're bringing weightlifting back into old people's homes so they can pick up their grandchildren. You know, and after a couple of, couple of months doing weights, mm. they're getting their mobility back and their strength back. Mm. But, but that's after having going downhill. So if you, you know, like if you if you train before that and do some light weights in your house, get yeah, some, it's much easier. You know, it's much easier to pick up your grandkids. Yeah. And yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to wait till you, you go to an old people's home. Struggle so hard to get back from being down so low. So what I want everybody to really look at is it's now's the moment. Now is the moment where you turn around and you start to regenerate. You know, stop looking at seventy as a good innings. It's not. That's a young life. You know, start looking at 120 as a good innings, you know, and, and we can lengthen our life. We really can. It's not about exhausting yourself with exercise, but it is about making sure you stay mobile. And one good tip I find is, is I find that after you train, there's two things that cause discomfort, you know, some, this is on a scientific basis. One is the lactic acid buildup in your muscles. And the other one is inflammation of joints that you haven't used for a while. Now, both of those can be combated with a really, really simple little thing you can get from the chemist called ural, which takes the uric acid out of your muscles and out of your joints. Right? And that will help ease. So when you get up in the morning feeling a bit stiff, just have one of those fizzy ural sachets. Um, they're like eight balls for 30 of them. And it takes the uric acid out of your joints, out of your muscles, and you feel a lot less achy. It does make your system alkaline. You don't want to do it all the time, because the body's natural state is acid. All these people that go alkaline, alkaline, alkaline. Now, your body is supposed to be in its acid state, but there are times when your body is too acid, and this is one of them after training. So you do want to bring the alkalinity of your body back down. And there are different alkalinity and acidity states for different parts of your body as well. But we're, we're looking at our muscles and our joints. All right. So a couple of other things for your joints to help with your inflammation. Um, in your oil is really, really good to take pain out of joints and take the inflammation down. Um, if you have an injury and you're working around it, do not. That's where my health went down. I did both my rotator shoulder cuts and I essentially, because it was really hard to do exercise if I couldn't move my arms. So I didn't exercise for about two years and now I'm coming back from that not having exercised for two years. So keep your mobility happening even if you do have an injury. And comfrey cream rubbed into an injury will help it accelerate its healing by three times. Um, I have not had any um, 
operations on my shoulders and I still have my full, more than full range of motion in my arms. So what's one of the best things that you find to get aches out of muscles the next day after you've done a little bit of training when you're a bit stiff and sore? Just do a warm up, do do some light exercise around it, and get the get the muscles moving again. Like, retrain, not as hard as you did to get the soreness, but just to get the soreness out. And the night before, I often see you um, massaging the muscles and rubbing the, the Chinese heat element into your muscles. Yeah. So you does it in preparation before exercises, so he knows that the next day is not going to be that sore. It keeps the muscles. Um, warm and limber. Train a different muscle. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So what you do is split routines. So yeah. you... Well, you can call it a split routine. Uh -huh. If your legs are sore that day, you just go for a gentle walk and get the uh -huh. blood pumping back into your muscles. But uh -huh. Work a different set of muscles. Yeah, There's so, so many muscles in your body. And you, can, you only need 10, 15 minute workout with weights uh -huh. per day. You don't have to train for hours and hours and uh -huh. hours. So if they go for a, like a one kilometre walk and they're a bit sore the next day, then go for a swim the following day. Sure. Yeah, would, go um, for a bike ride. Or a, well, what we love ride. is going for a paddle on the canoe. So, you know, use our legs the day before, so we paddle and use our arms the next day. Anything you do. But stay mobile, keep moving, right? That's the most important thing. Um, we like to get up high where the energy is really good for the sun gazing, so you can draw in your energy from the sun. Um, and it's also like athletes who train up mountains, you'll find that they win. The reason why all the, um, the African sprinters um, and long distance runners win at the uh, Olympics is they go to that training facility up Kilimanjaro, which is up nice and high. And not only do they get the high refined energies, but also it's much better for their lungs and their bodies when they train up high. Americans all go to Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, yeah. I bumped into a lot of them up there. Yeah, when you were doing the skiing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happy all right. days. All right, my loves. So I just thought we'd take advantage of the wisdom of Mr. Mm. Wills. Yeah, with wisdom. the Wills wisdom while he's here. Um, we don't Use always... it or lose it. <laughs> yeah. So remember the eagle story I told you this morning. So, all right, we're going to start regenerating it. Put the effort in. Right, and if you do want to support other people, you can always support them by helping us with our Patreon campaign. And we will put the link down the bottom so you can be the mother eagle for a lot of other people as well. All right, my loves, well, every blessing on your journey. Um, it's been so nice to see so many of you popping in. I couldn't say hello to all of you while I was talking to Ken. But yeah, thanks for joining in. And look, it's your life. It really is. So enjoy it. Uh, when you're doing your training, every day do something that you enjoy all right it might be a little uncomfortable but look i'm just seeing so many people the the the, the epidemic of obesity and bow legs that we're seeing comes from people just going oh, i can't be bothered oh no it's too much effort your life is worth the effort and if you don't put the effort in now and go through a small amount of discomfort your discomfort later back pain loss of use of your limbs diabetes loss of eyesight all those sorts of things that happen as well as early death unless you're super medicated you know our goal is to live a long 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 life unmedicated right so that we don't need medication and support we are naturally healthy right and that we can just rise up right? this is part of our spiritual practice I keep saying to people, you cannot have a spiritual practice if you're an invalid, right? In that you've invalided yourself because of your self-neglect. How you're supposed to tell people to accelerate their life. If you are a disabled person, that is different. I have many disabled friends who are intensely spiritual and intensely physical people that work around their disability and um, still train themselves. All right, my loves. Every blessing on your journey. Keep the joy, keep moving, keep active. Don't wait till you get to the other side to realize how precious this was, this existence is on this planet and how this moving is so missed by so many people on the other side. Uh, take care. It's bye from me and it's... Bye. <laughs>